ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮದೇ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿಧಿನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಯು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಹೌ ವಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ವಿರಾಟ್ ಪರ್ವ how the pandavas entered into the 13th year of agyatvas where they had to remain undiscovered by the kauravas so they had to hide themselves somewhere and remain for one year and if they were going to be discovered by the kauravas within this one year period then the condition was they have to again go through the 12 year period and the 13th year again so duryodhan had tried to send so many spies all over the world in order to find where the pandavas are hiding but by the blessings of dharmaraj by the blessings of durga devi and by the blessings of krishna ultimately uh, no one could detect where the pandavas were uh, finally they heard the news of kichaka's death how kichaka had tried to uh, exploit uh, draupadi and how bhima killed kichak so that news spread far and wide and duryodhan started suspecting who was it who killed kichak maybe it was bhima who else could have killed kichak kichak was a very powerful warrior wrestler and no one could have killed him but if he was killed by someone it has to be bhima so with that plan to discover uh the pandavas they attacked virat along with the trigartha army so trigartha army was uh, they had they tried to steal the cows and all the wealth of the virata kingdom so the king virat and his army generals went to defend the kingdom and they also were accompanied by the pandavas four pandava brothers yudhishthir bhima nakul and sahadev and together they defeated the trigartha army and and <clears throat> retrieved the cows retrieved the property and the trigartha uh, army was completely destroyed in this way the pandavas uh, protected virat the next day the kauravas attacked the virat kingdom and this time the prince bhuminjay uttar kumar he starts bragging that i will single handedly defeat the kauravas give me the army give me the warrior give me the chariot driver and i will go so then brahmanala's name was suggested as a chariot driver so brahmanala accompanied bhuminjay and when both of them went into the battlefield and saw the kaurava army lined up this prince uttar kumar bhuminjay was terrified he couldn't believe this is the army i have to face and he started uh, running away from the battlefield so then brahmanala who was arjun he started encouraging uh, uttar kumar saying are you are a kshatriya how can you just run away for a kshatriya to run away from the battlefield is worse than death maranad tirichate the geeta krishna says insult a humiliation for a kshatriya is worse than death better to die in the battlefield then get humiliated by the opponents so he tried to encourage uh, uttar kumar but then uttar kumar said i cannot fight i don't mind losing the battle i don't mind losing all my wealth i want my life that is so dear to me so then brihanala suggested okay do one thing i will fight the war on your behalf you become my chariot here let us exchange our positions you drive the chariot and i will i will fight so uttar kumar was surprised how can how can a eunuch fight the war especially this war this army but arjun encouraged him and he said okay we don't don't talk too much let us go and get the weapons so he took him to the tree where he had where the pandavas had hidden their weapons so he climbed the tree 
and picked up the bundle and got it down and opened the cloth and he saw all these powerful weapons and uh, he said this is arjun's weapon i am arjun son of pandu kunti the brother of yudhishthir so he said uh, uh, so then he was surprised how can he thought the pandavas were dead already after the exile and now he is able to see them take their darshan so he said if you are really arjun let me know the 10 names of arjun so then arjun described his names dhananjay all those names and then he was convinced yes this is arjun himself so he got ready he saw the gandiva bow and all the weapons and the twang of the gandiva bow he couldn't he couldn't even face the sound of the twang uh, when arjun tied the bow and then made the sound he got terrified but then somehow he got courage started driving the chariot so this entire scene was being seen by the kauravas we saw the, till the, this time till this point uh, last time so dra bhima bhishma drona duryodhan they were all seeing who is this prince coming and how is getting terrified how is running back and how this eunuch chariot driver is encouraging him and then they are going to the street and fetching all the weapons so then they started suspecting this doesn't look like a eunuch he is dressed as a eunuch but he looks like a very powerful warrior and they started suspecting this looks like arjun and when they heard the twang of the gandiva bow their suspicions were confirmed this has to be arjun no one else can do this so then duryodhan started saying oh if it is arjun that means we have discovered them before the 13th year got over which means they have to again go back to exile so then bhishma started calculating astrologically whether the 13th year got over or not and he made the calculations and he informed duryodhan look duryodhan according to my calculations the 13th year is over the pandava has successfully completed the vow that was put on them the conditions they have successfully fulfilled now either you fight the war or give back the kingdom of course duryodhan had no intention of giving back the kingdom but then he started he started stubbornly saying no 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 the the 13th year is not yet over uh, with there is still some more days left so in this way he started arguing anyway right now they had to face arjun he was getting ready for the war so if it is arjun then it is not going to be easy uh, everyone got ready it is not the fight is going to be really good hard so then uh, kripacharya suggested one thing he said look Ar- look duryodhan uh, you better do one thing you take the cows that's the main mission we have come for you take all the cows 1 lakh cows and start moving towards hastinapur we will engage with arjun so in this way duryodhan and a small group of army broke away from the main army and they started directing all the cows uh, away from the battle field so arjun saw this he understood duryodhan's plan so he told uttar kumar look there is no point in fighting with all these armies our main our main target is duryodhan and i see him going there in that direction so move that chariot in that direction so uttar kumar started moving the chariot in that direction so when the other warriors saw this kripacharya and bhishma they said what is the use of standing here if duryodhan is dead and we can't save him then what's the point so immediately they started challenging arjun but arjun was attacking duryodhan so upon receiving arjun's challenge duryodhan had to come back into the battlefield he had to leave all the cows and the cows again started entering into their goshalas entering into the cow sheds so his plan to steal the cows failed now all of them had to get ready to face arjun so in this way one by one they started fighting with arjun uh, beginning with uh, duryodhan then ashwatthama challenged uh, and uh, the fight continued with ashwatthama ashwatthama got injured duryodhan got injured then karna came in uh, karna uh, duryodhan's brother started assisting him 
karna had his own brother who also assisted him and the fight between karna and arjun lasted for a long time both were equally powerful equally skillful and both were releasing all kinds of arrows celestial weapons regular weapons each one was neutralizing the other's weapons and everyone just stood there and kept watching the fight between these two most powerful warriors sometimes arjun was gaining the upper hand sometimes karna was gaining the upper hand but finally arjun got the better of karna and uh, karna was injured and he went back the chariot driver took him back then other warriors started coming and fighting with arjun arjun defeated all of them and duryodhan's brothers again karna re entered the battle field after some time and his brother assisted him but in front of karna wise arjun with a very sharp arrow cut off the head of karna's brother and he was dead and karna couldn't believe in front of his eyes my brother got killed and i couldn't protect him again both of them started fighting again because karna's armor kavach and kundal was not there he had already donated it to indra so his body was really injured by all the arrows that were being striked by arjun's weapons and this way he got really injured he got wounded blood started coming out again his chariot driver took him out of the battlefield to save his life for some reason Ar- karna didn't get his shakti weapon and he had forgotten it to get the shakti weapon he remembers it later why i didn't bring it i could have used it against arjun but somehow i forgot anyway so in this way uh, arjun defeated karna even in the uh, even when the gandharvas came there also karna had karna got defeated by the at the hands of gandharvas and arjun had defeated gandharva so this questions come up comes up several times who was better arjun or karna so all these histories incidents prove that karna was skillful he had a great amount of skill but because he was vicious he didn't have character he was the one who insulted offended draupadi also and so that way he was a very demonic he had a demonic character and even skill wise he was not as good as arjun in all these in, in all these fights arjun actually defeated karna several times anyway so karna's hurdle was gone then uh, uh, the another warriors dronacharya came uh, and arjun again defeated dronacharya dronacharya was skillful he was a guru but he was old arjun was young comparatively then bhishma the fight with bhishma happens for a long time and that also lasted for a long time and again arjun uh, uh, with all his powerful weapons he attacked bhishma in such with such great force bhishma almost became unconscious again the chariot driver took him away so in this way the entire army was defeated single handedly by arjun just imagine arjun had no warriors to support him and the entire kaurava army standing there but still uh, he was able to be, emerge victorious and after the, the entire army was defeated arjun collected all the jewelries and earrings and all those gold and silver from the warriors because he had promised the palace residents that he will get some gifts for them and so he collected some of them went back to to sorry to virata's capital and uh, uh, he told his uh, chariot driver umenjaya now you go and announce that uh, we have come out victorious so when he entered uh, bhuminjay entered at that time he, in the mean time in the palace of virat they got the news that our our army has uh, our army is now gone to face kauravas kauravas have attacked because in the kauravas attacked virat was away he was not in the palace only his son was there later he came to know that my son has gone alone to face such a mighty army of the kurus and he was terrified will my son come back alive 
what will happen to him what will happen to our kingdom who will protect us he was really afraid especially when kichak was not there he was already dead otherwise he would have defended the country so he was in fear and he was wondering what will happen to my son that's when he got the news that your son is has come victorious single handedly he has defeated all the uh, kaurav army so arjun had told bhuminjay that you should not announce that i fought for you you should announce that you fought the war because arjun didn't want to release the news that they are pandavas he wanted yudhishthir to break the news the breaking news so therefore he had told bhuminjay that you should not say that i am pandava i am arjun you should say that you won the war in this way uh, the news messenger came and the messenger announced to the virat uh, the king virat your son is coming victorious so at that time yudhishthir and uh, the king were playing dice yudhishthir's name was kanka and uh, so kanka said if uh, if your son has come victorious then you should give all credit to brihanala the chariot driver if brihanala was a chariot driver of your son then it is not astonishing that your son became victorious so he, the king was surprised why why is he saying like this so he didn't hear he continued playing the game after again some time he said if your son has become victorious that means it was brihanala the chariot driver who should be given the credit so the king got annoyed uh, so then he said how can you why do you say this brihanala is just a eunuch my son is a very powerful courageous warrior why do you think my son cannot defeat the army again you just said the same thing as long as anyone has brihanala has the chariot driver the warrior has to become victorious so when the king heard this he got really angry and he took the dice he took the dice and threw it on the face of kanka yudhishthir and that hit his forehead and blood started coming out and he immediately held his hand and he collected the blood and uh, draupadi looked at him but she didn't say anything he couldn't do anything so then yudhishthir told uh, that that time another messenger came and he said uh, the your prince uttar kumar is coming entering the palace please welcome him so king got busy uh, uh, arranging for the welcoming of his son so that time yudhishthir told the messenger you have to do one thing immediately you should go and tell the prince that he should come alone he should enter the palace alone don't bring brihanala inside so why did he say this because yudhishthir knew that arjun had taken a vow that if i see yudhishthir injured by someone if i see a blood coming out of yudhishthir at the hands of someone then i will kill that person immediately without without a second thought that means if arjun see is that virat or uh, yudhishthir was injured by virat and virat has caused blood to come out of yudhishthir's body then arjun will kill virat immediately so in order to protect the situation in order to save virat yudhishthir told the messenger don't tell arjun to come inside don't tell brihanala to come inside so the messenger immediately conveyed the message to brihanala also and the prince also so prince came alone inside and the king was very happy very happy to welcome the prince and he started kissing him embracing him and congratulating him well done my son single handedly you could face all the mighty kaurava warriors and defeat them protect our kingdom so nice and there was entertainment and music to celebrate their victory but the prince was humble enough he said oh my dear father uh, it was not me who fought the war some celestial gandharva came 
and they assisted me uh to fight the war and defeat all these people so the king asked where is he why didn't you get him here so he said he will come at the right moment so anyway the king was very happy and the, there was whole celebration and the palace residents were joyful so in this way everyone retired for the day the next day the next day all the yudhishthir bhim arjun nakul sahadev draupadi they all they all put on royal dress they didn't took out they didn't wear their regular servant dress they took the position of royal uh, warriors and instead of sitting in their regular positions like every day they took up the positions where kings would sit so the next day when the assembly convened uh, these uh, yudhishthir and all they took up kshatriya kshatriya chair positions and the king entered at the right time and he was surprised are my servant uh, kanka is sitting here and he saw vallabha the cook brihannala the eunuch all of them taking up prominent positions in the court and then he got a little annoyed and he was about to chastise them when arjun stood up and he started announcing oh my king oh my dear king uh you may be wondering why we are sitting here let you let may you be informed that this person who acted as your dice player entertainer for all all these months he is none other than uh, hastinapur indra pras naresh yudhishthir uh, he is the eldest son of king pandu and kunti and he is the one who is even respected by the demigods who is well known well well versed with all the scriptural knowledge the son of dharmaraj he is mighty yudhishthir and then he started announcing uh, disclosing everyone's name then he talked about bhima the one who has served as the cook for all these years and one who killed kichak protected draupadi that is your vallabha the cook bhima here and then it spoke about nakul one who was handling your cows uh, horses and sahadev who acted as your cowherd boy and then here is the fair lady draupadi who is who who is the emperor who deserves the position of the empress and she has been serving your queen menially all these years she was the one who caused the death of kichak the evil minded kichak because he wanted to enjoy with draupadi he met his end in this way and i am brihannala i am arjun who acted as brihannala the dance teacher for your uh, daughter so when the king saw all these five pandavas in draupadi he couldn't believe and he was overjoyed he said you all i was wondering where you were all these years ever since you were banished from your kingdom we are wondering where you were whether you were alive or dead and i am grateful that you chose our kingdom for spending your last one year our kingdom has now become auspicious and i request that you take over my kingdom i will step down as the king you are fit to become the ruler of this kingdom so please accept the throne and continue ruling so of course they didn't they didn't accept that position they said no 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 uh, we are very grateful for for allowing us to stay in your kingdom all these years all these months and we thank you uh, then the prince also announced that it was brihannala arjun who helped him Uh, fight the kurus and defeat them in this way there was a joyous celebration all over the kingdom the king was very happy but he wanted to do something for the pandavas and he was really feeling bad that he offended yudhishthir he injured yudhishthir so he wanted to do something so he said what can i do since you are not accepting my kingdom okay let me offer my daughter to you daughter to arjun as his wife uttara her name was uttara so arjun said uh, look all these months 
I have been acting as her teacher, and she has been confiding in me so many things. So I cannot look at her as my wife. I see her as my daughter. So I suggest instead of I marrying her, uh, you allow him, allow my son to marry her. Let my son Abhimanyu marry her. He is well qualified in all ways. He has been trained in Dwarka by Krishna and by his son Pradyumna. And he is, he is a very powerful warrior, qualified in all respects. He can be your son-in-law. So when Virata heard this uh, proposal, he was very happy. He didn't mind. He said, okay, either way, whether he gets married to you, whether she gets married to you or your son, I don't mind. As long as we are connected with the glorious Pandava family, I am happy. So in this way, the arrangements began for the marriage of Abhimanyu and Uttara. And very soon Abhimanyu arrived, Krishna arrived, Krishna and Balaram arrived, all the prominent warriors from Dwarka arrived. And very soon the marriage between Abhimanyu and Uttara was performed. And there was a nice celebration and everyone was happy. And things got settled down gradually. So now that uh, this thing got over, one second. So finally, everything was settled and now the main discussion happened. So what to do? Now that the 13th year has got over, uh, we don't hear any information from the Kauravas. Ideally, they should have come to Virat and invited the Pandavas back to Hastinapur and given their share of the kingdom. But there is no news from Dhritarashtra, no news from Hastinapur at all. And everyone knew they are not going to return the share, but at least some message should have come from Hastinapur. Uh, so uh, uh, there was there was King Krishna and Balaram from Dwarka. There were other important kings. There was Drupada. Drupada happens to be Draupadi's father, Pandava's father-in-law. So he had come, uh, and all those people who understood that Pandavas were alive, they had come and assembled in Virat. So in the next day assemblies, uh, assembly time, uh, this question was raised. What to do now? How should the Pandavas proceed? What should be their next move? Now, like in chess, you have different moves. What should be our next move? So uh, uh, everyone looked at Krishna and Balaram and Krishna gave his opinion. Uh, so Yudhishthir has uh, successfully finished his 13th year uh, and he has uh, maintained his promise. So ideally, the Pandavas should be given their share. So we should send one messenger who can go. If they are not ready to give back, war is certain. We should definitely fight the war and kill all these uh, 100 Kauravas, the, Kaurav, the evil-minded Kauravas. But before the war, let us see what their intentions are. Then Drupada suggested, uh, it is true, I don't have any, I don't trust the, uh, the Kauravas to return the kingdom. Duryodhana is evil-minded. He is a foolish, evil-minded son and Dhritarashtra is equally foolish. So there is hardly any hope that they will return. But let us still, as a matter of etiquette, let us see what their intentions are. So I suggest, I will send one messenger from my side and let them convey the message the Kaurava assembly and see what is their response. So in this way, everyone approved Drupada's uh, idea and Krishna and Balaram suggested, okay, now that uh, 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 things are proceeding, we trust, let us hand, let us, uh, let Drupada take, uh, analyze the situation, take a final decision, how to go about it. Whenever the war is going to happen, we will all come and assist the Pandava. So in this way, uh, Krishna and Balaram went back to Dwarka. Drupada then started arranging to send a messenger to Hastinapur. So, so messenger is getting ready. Meanwhile, uh, Duryodhana and Arjun. Duryodhana is planning. 
uh, how to go about the situation. So Kripacharya suggested to Duryodhan, if you are not, ideally you should give back the kingdom. Bhishma also suggested. But if there is no plan to give back the kingdom, better get ready for war. Arjun and the Pandavas might also be getting ready for war. So Arjun, Duryodhan started spending spies and messengers to all the, all, all the kings all over the world to get their assistance. And on the Pandava side, on the Virat side, Drupada also started sending messengers to various kings, various friends who were likely to assist him. So both parties are sending, collecting armies. And gradually, armies started arriving in both Virat and in uh, Hastinapur. But uh, Duryodhan thought, the Yadu army, that's the main thing. Let me personally go to Krishna in Dwarka and get his army. And in Virat, Arjuna also thought, I need to personally go and check with Krishna and get his support. So Duryodhan went on a fine horse, went to re reach Dwarka. At the same time, Arjuna also reached Dwarka. That's quite an interesting coincidence. Both of them reaching Dwarka at the same time. So Duryodhan entered into Krishna's palace and he was taking rest. He reached a few seconds, few minutes earlier than Arjun. And he saw Krishna lying there, taking rest. And a queen, one of the Krishna's queens was fanning Krishna with a charmer. So Duryodhan went and took a position near his head. Very soon Arjun arrived and he saw Krishna lying down, taking rest. And his eyes were filled with love and affection. He took a position near Krishna's feet. And both were waiting. When will Krishna wake up? So they both saw each other, Krishna and uh, Arjuna and Duryodhana. They exchanged some greetings, or official formal greetings, and they were waiting for Krishna to wake up. And very soon Krishna woke up. And he saw Arjun, and he was very happy to see his dear friend. And then he saw Duryodhana. And he uh, showed surprise. My two cousins have arrived here. Now, what can I do for you? Please let me know your desires. Then Duryodhan spoke. So, my dear Keshav, as you know, uh, very soon we are going to have a war. And I need your help. So, Krishna said, look, I saw Arjun first. And he is the younger brother, younger of the two. So let him let me hear from him. What is his uh, option? What is his desire? And then Krishna announced, "Look, I have an uh, I have my Narayani Sena, the most powerful Sena in the world, uh, one uh, one million soldiers. Uh, I can give my Sena to either of you. If one party can take my Sena, and the other party can have me as a consultant, as an advisor." But I, I announced that I won't lift any weapon. I won't personally fight. But I can. I am available as a consultant, as a guide. So he asked Arjun, so Arjun, what do you wish to have? You want to have my Sena or me? And as expected, Arjun said, I want you, my dear Krishna. You be with me. And please be, yes, please give me your support. So when Duryodhan heard this, he couldn't believe his ears. How can Arjun be so foolish? He is asking for Krishna, who is not going to lift any weapon, not going to fight the war. And he couldn't believe that Arjun can be so foolish. So then he said, okay, if Arjun is wanting to have you, then I am left with only your Sena. What can I do? Internally, he was rejoicing that he got the Sena. So he said, thank you, Krishna, for your assistance. Uh, and then he left the palace. From there, he went to Balaramji's palace. Uh, he went to Balaram because Balaram was... Balaram ha and Duryodhan had a nice relationship. Balaram was the guru of Duryodhan in terms of Gada fighting, maze fighting. So he went to Balaram hoping that Balaram will at least support him. So, Balaram said, uh, if Krishna is supporting Arjun, uh, then how can I fight against Krishna? I cannot fight any war against the army that is supported by Krishna. So, I also will not fight, my dear Duryodhan, but I give you all my blessings. And I hope 
that you will employ all the fair means of war. So Duryodhana understood Krishna's <coughs> Balaramji's mood. He understood how uh, that uh, he respected Balaram's decision, and he received Balaram's blessings. And from there he went to Kritavarma. Who is Kritavarma? Kritavarma was the commander in chief of the Narayani Sena, Dwarka Sena. And he was a very powerful, famous warrior. So he went to Kritavarma and said, "I want your assistance in the upcoming war." So Kritavarma said, "Okay, since you are requesting, that was a Kshatri etiquette. Whoever asks for assistance, you cannot say no." So Kritavarma agreed to become the commander in chief of the Yadu Sena. So in this way, Duryodhan left Dwarka with a happy mood. At least his mission was successful. he got the most powerful narayani sena on his side uh, and he went back to hastinapur and there in uh, arjun and krishna also spent some time together for a few days they were discussing after a long time they were meeting so arjun was also happy duryodhan was also happy and after that arjun left came back to virat so in this way gradually the both hastinapur and virat was being overcrowded with armies from various cities various parts of the world and there was this king called shalya shalya was the uncle of nakul and sahadev madri's brother so that way they were related to the pandavas and naturally uh, shalya was expected to support the pandavas so he was coming with his army hoping to fight on the side of the pandavas and duryodhan got this news that shalya is coming So he set up a nice camp on the way for uh, welcoming Shalya and his army, and there was night nice refreshments and drinks available for the entire army for all the warriors. And Shalya was happy to get such a nice accommodation on the way. They were really tired, and they enjoyed all the drinks and food, and he was relaxing nicely. That's when Duryodhan entered his camp, and he said, "Uh." Good morning, my dear Shalya. So Shalya said, uh, "Oh, thank you so much for arrangement. I, I didn't know that you were the one who has arranged all this. Thank you so much." Uh, Duryodhan said, "Since you are very happy, please fulfill one request of mine." He said, "Whatever you request, I will fulfill. Whatever is within my capacity, I will fulfill." Then Duryodhan said, "So in the upcoming war, please fight on our side." so shalya was a little unhappy about this but because it was the promise he had given he was obliged to fight obliged to support uh, duryodhan and the kauravas but then he said let me once go and meet yudhishthir uh, and then i'll join you in hastinapur <clears throat> so duryodhan said okay so from there uh, shalya went to virat to meet yudhishthir and he informed yudhishthir that this is what happened Ah, I wanted to support you, but then Duryodhan played this trick, and now I am obliged to fight on his side. So Yudhishthir, when he heard this, he was a little disappointed. He said, "Okay, whatever destiny has in store for us, we are happy that you are. Your heart is with us, but uh, whatever happens ultimately by the supreme will, that is going to happen." So Shalya said, "Can I do something, something for you?" how can i help you in some way so yudhishthir said i can understand that in the future in the war uh, duryodhan will request you to become the chariot driver of karuna so you are always already famous as a excellent chariot driver so when you, when you become the chariot driver of karuna you should discourage him criticize him and in this way bring down his morale and courage that's the best thing you can do to do for uh, for us so shalya said okay that i will definitely i promise to do this for you and in this way shalya went back he took his army and went to went to hastinapur so yudhishthir yudhishthir also happy 
at least some help i'll get from shalya so in this way pandava started getting accumulating their armies <clears throat> there was this one king called drishtaketu who supplied one akshauhini army and then there was another king pandya king he supplied one akshauhini army so one akshauhini means several thousand soldiers i think about 20 to 22000 foot soldiers and several thousand horses <clears throat> several thousand elephants several chariot drivers in this way this whole unit is there that's called one akshauhini so virat king he supplied one akshauhini division of soldiers drupada very powerful king he gave two akshauhinis and other kings contributed to akshauhini in this way pandavas had seven akshauhini divisions of soldiers on the other side kauravas had 11 akshauhini soldiers duryodhan had much more influence and contact all over the world so all of them came and assisted duryodhan he accumulated 11 akshauhini soldiers so in this way both hastinapur and uh, virat was overcrowded with armies just imagine so many lakhs of soldiers in one city there was hardly any place to move around walk around freely and these armies and elephants and horses are making so much noise it was already like a battlefield now they had to decide a date when to begin the war so meanwhile drupada sent his messenger to hastinapur wanting to know understand what exactly are the intentions of the guru so this messenger went and uh, reached hastinapur and he started announcing so the yudhishthira and the pandava successfully completed their term of exile uh, now they are eagerly waiting to hear from you are you ready to hand over the king i hand over the kingdom or get ready for the war uh, so they started inquiring so what are what is everyone's opinion what does yudhishthira say what does yudh bhima arjun say and then the messenger started conveying all the message how everyone is angry bhima is angry waiting for the war arjun is angry he has collected all the weapons from heavenly planets from all the demigods everyone is getting prepared for the war but if you are ready to settle the issue then they won't fight but otherwise everyone is eager and angry like like lions and mad and elephants so they uh, heard everything about the pandava preparations Uh, but dhritarashtra wouldn't say anything uh, he just remained equivocal not clearly saying that he is ready to uh, give give the kingdom back to us back to yudhishthira he just said please tell yudhishthira that violence is bad war is bad there is so much destruction going to happen why does he want to fight why don't we settle down peacefully and live happily he was saying all these statements but he never spoke about giving back the kingdom so in this way the messenger came back to virat and informed this is what happened so everyone simply laughed understanding their foolish intentions meanwhile dhritarashtra also sent a messenger he sent sanjay uh wanting to understand the pandavas intent So Sanjay came to Virat, Parva, Virat uh, capital, and he was he came inside. Krishna Balaram had also come at that time from Dwarka, and then uh, Sanjay started uh, conveying the message of this uh, Drashtra. Again, he repeated the same message: Why do you want to fight the war? Unnecessarily kill so many people. Why don't we just settle down peacefully? You are so virtuous. You have uh, you don't unnecessarily pick up quarrels. So let us let us settle down. So uh, everyone again laughed, and then uh, uh, each one started speaking. Each of the Pandavas, Drupada also spoke, Krishna Balaram also spoke. Uh, so everyone said, "There is no way we are going to settle down. Uh, either give back our kingdom, rightful share, or get ready for war. Uh, we are not afraid of anyone. Uh, we are all well prepared." So Sanjay, as dutifully, he just conveyed the message. He went back and informed the Trashtra that everyone is angry like 
మ్యాడ్ అండ్ లయన్స్ ఈదర్ యూ ఫైట్ దే ఆర్ నర నారాయణ కృష్ణ అండ్ అర్జున ఆర్ నర నారాయణ ఇంకార్నేట్ అండ్ కృష్ణ ఇస్ ద స్క్రీన్ పర్సనాలిటీ గాడ్ హెమ్ సెల్ఫ్ హి అలోన్ క్యాన్ డిస్ట్రాయ్ ది ఎంటైర్ అర్త్ వాట్ టు స్పీక్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ ఇన్సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ కౌరవాస్ బెటర్ యూ గివ్ బ్యాక్ ద కింగ్డమ్ ఆర్ గెట్ రెడీ ఫర్ డిస్ట్రక్షన్ and all of them are well prepared bhima is like waiting for killing all your 100 sons for the insult uh, duryodhana has done to draupadi so dhritarashtra heard all this and he got really terrified he was actually afraid of krishna uh, and he again he said the same thing oh, everything is destiny what can we do whatever is going to happen is going to happen i cannot advise my sons my sons are not going to listen to me internally he was attached to his position and he was hoping against hope that uh, uh that uh, somehow his sons will uh, emerge victorious so in this way dhritarashtra represents the foolishness of an attached materialist how materialists in spite of seeing a danger outside in spite of seeing all reversals they will never surrender to god they will never reform themselves and come back to their senses they will remain attached to their positions and uh, never improve so in this way uh, he heard every even vidura tried to advise him bhishma advised him vidura even invited vyas dev hoping that vyas dev if he hears from vyas dev probably he may change but no change the dhritarashtra remains stubborn and krishna also had conveyed one message to sanjay he said look the duryodhan tree duryodhan is a full big huge tree full of viciousness malice he is a tree of adharma and karna is a main trunk of that tree and shakuni is a very important branch of the tree there is a tree trunk branch and dushyasana and all his brothers they are like the numerous fruits and flowers of the tree and the root of the tree who is the root dhritarashtra the blind king is the root of this tree ah uh, dhritarashtra he had the power to cut down the tree to stop the war all he had to do was stop duryodhana and karna from fighting if he had issued one order and then they wouldn't have been fight but he didn't do that therefore he is the root of he is the root of the entire calamity then he says krishna says to sanjay yudhishthir is a tall tree full of virtue and who is a trunk arjun is a trunk of the tree and then bhima is a branch and nakul and sahadev are its flowers and fruits and who is the root krishna says i am the root of the tree i myself am the root along with the brahmanas and the vedic literature we form the root of the yudhishthir tree so look at this two trees the tree of dharma and the tree of adharma ultimately the tree of dharma is going to emerge victorious and the tree of adharma will be destroyed completely in this way krishna said all these things sanjay and sanjay narrated all these events to dhritarashtra and dhritarashtra and all the pandavas uh, kauravas were in great anxiety after hearing the message how everyone was getting prepared for war duryodhan karna and of course <clears throat> they were hoping duryodhan especially was hoping that the danavas are going to support me why should i fear krishna why should i fear arjun bhima i have all these powerful kings assisting me and uh, the danavas are going to support me as they promised the other day so in this way uh, duryodhan remains stubborn in spite of hearing all the good advice from everyone he just rubbish them aside and he said there is no way i am going to change i am going to bow down there is no way i am going to return their kingdom the war is going to happen and we will fight and dhritarashtra couldn't say anything everyone then got ready to fight the war hoping just understand the hopelessness of the situation uh, seeing how destiny is ultimately under control how krishna ultimately is in control 
<clears throat> and how krishna is deter determined to destroy the evil minded kauravas they could see that destruction is very soon going to happen in this way uh, the both parties are now getting ready very soon we are going to see how the war happened began those exciting moments the various events that happened in the mighty war of kurukshetra that has become such a popular story the war between dharma and adharma all right so i will stop here if anyone has any question we can take then we will have the kahoot quiz let us see if uh, opal lila prabhu has joined opal lila prabhu is he going to come mathe radhika kishori mathe Okay, anyone has any question? Comment? Naman has raised his hand. Sumit has raised his hand. Okay, let me unmute you. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. My name is Mathu. My question is that Jaiku said that the war between dharma and adharma. So why do we call it like the Pandavas and the Kauravas are like one family, right? So how can be the dharma and dharma together? I don't understand that. Yeah, although they belong to the same family. but their characters were totally opposite they one party one set of brothers represented dharma and displayed the quality qualities of dharma and the other set of brothers all the one in the same family uh, embodied all the adharmic qualities like it is said in satya yuga we have these four yuga satya yuga treta yuga dwapara yuga and kali yuga in satya yuga dharma and adharma are Uh, the people who display dharma and adharma they are located in different planetary systems like in swarga there are devas who follow dharma in the lower planetary system there are asuras who who follow adharma and there is war happening between these two dharma and adharma forces in treta yuga people who practice dharma and adharma are located in the same planet but in different continents uh, like ram and ayodhya in one place Uh, ravan and lanka in another place same planet but different continents or different uh, locations uh, so but and then there was a war between these dharma and adharma forces in dwapar yuga the both dharma and adharma forces happen in the same family uh, within the same family you will find people who are devoted to dharma and some other people devoted to adharma and there is a war between them and what happens in kali yuga in kali yuga dharma and adharma forces are situated in the same person within one person you will find sometimes qualities of dharma coming out and qualities of adharma coming out at the other times so the demonic and de divine forces are within us we behave like dharma uh, the demigod sometimes we behave like demon sometimes so therefore we have to be careful we have to suppress the demonic asuric forces and allow dharma or divine forces to win that's why we are studying the gita studying the bhagavatam mahabharat ramayana so that the adharmic forces are controlled and suppressed and destroyed and divine forces emerge victorious okay is that okay and prabhu ji like you said demons and demigods in the satya yuga are the demigods also included like in one person there is good qualities and bad qualities or the devas are the only the good forces usually majority of their existence is good forces although occasionally they may display uh, bad qualities but in kali yuga it is like 50 50 in satya yuga treta yuga it's like not so uh, not so the one person usually doesn't have both qualities one quality is dominant so devas are predominantly divine because they are obedient to lord vishnu and krishna 
occasionally rarely they may display some good qualities uh, bad quality similarly asuras also predominantly they are demonic and they are adharmic occasionally you may find they may be displaying some good qualities we have the example of prallad and bali maharaj who were born in asura families but they were like exceptions okay okay so amit you want to say hari krishna prabhu i had a doubt that uh, yudhishthir hari krishna can you listen yes yes uh, yeah i have a doubt that yudhishthir uh, was a man of truth he uh, wouldn't tell a lie so and hmm. he would uh, not cheat anyone then also why did he say tell her to um, this uh, discourage discourage and distract karna from fighting Ah, uh, because because he wanted to win the war. He he had he was facing the biggest threat from Karna, uh, and he thought if Karna is the biggest challenge for Arjun, Karna was vicious against the Pandavas, and he somehow wanted to know, uh, wanted a method to tackle Karna. So therefore, he requested Chalya. That was not against. That was not against the principle of dharma. That was one method of diplomatic behavior, where. you take the help of some well wisher friend who can assist you so just because uh, you are a truthful person virtuous person doesn't mean you simply give in uh, foolishly to the enemy forces you have to employ all kinds of tactics and diplomacy in spite of all such a calamity he never spoke a lie only one time he spoke during that ashwatthama incident dronacharya incident but that also because krishna told him otherwise he was not eager to speak that lie also so that way he maintained his integrity qualities divine qualities honesty okay we have naman raised his hand dimple has raised her hand krishna has raised her hand who wants to speak first naman has been raising his hand for a long time okay naman hare krishna prabhu ji ha uh, hare krishna so prabhu ji uh, I, i had a one question is there kahoot today Yes, I had at least I was expecting. I'm expecting Gopal Lila Prabhu to join. Yes, yes Gopal yes, Lila Prabhu has joined, and there is one more thing I wanted to tell that that there the, in the Bhagavad Gita, by when I was uh, hearing by Gauranga Darshan Das, there are at more at least twenty two names of Arjun and more than thirty three names of Krishna, and also can you just narrate when? Um, can you just uh, say which parva uh, the bhagavad gita is going to come in bhishma parva and then after that which parva comes drona parva okay okay bhishma parva is in bhishma was in command drona parva is when drona was in command so when as a commander in chief changed on the uh, kaurava side the parva names also changed then karna parva shalya all those names come okay then uh, who is here uh dimple you want to say hare krishna prabhu ji prabhu Hi. ji uh, my question was prabhu ji your issue told that um uh, shalya should uh, discourage um matlab ka so prabhu ji when the war was going prabhu ji i have heard in one lecture i don't remember who is um that they were saying actually um when uh, they were fighting uh, when Sha- uh, kon got shalya as his chariot uh, kon was uh, using his shakti astra to kill uh, arjuna but he kill uh, but shalya told him um kill on uh, means put the shakti astra in his uh, neck but uh, he told him i will put it in his head only so like this is something which is of um helping him prabhu ji so means he is not um following the promise no <laughs> that is true actually before entering the main area of battlefield Uh, shalya discouraged him he, he spoke against karna and in this way uh, he discouraged karna but when the actual fight began the fight began and the 
uh, two warriors started fighting. That's the only time Shalya felt, at least let me do my duty now. Let me at least give some hope and encouragement to Karna. So he had actually advised Karna rightfully uh, with a good intention. And Karna also appreciated that. Karna said, at least now you are speaking to me like a friend. Thank you so much. All these minutes, all this while you were discouraging me and you acted like my enemy. Thank you. At least you have now, it seems you have changed your mind and supporting. Me. So yes, one point of time, Shalya did uh, encourage uh, Karna because he felt that's my duty as a chariot driver. I'm supposed to actually help the warrior. <clears throat> so he did his duty. It's not exactly like he was deviating from promise given to Yudhishthira. Okay. Uh, yes, Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Ah. Prabhuji, you only told that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that the Anavas would uh, support the Ryodan. So, in the war, did they support? Ah, yes, they supported, not directly. They empowered Duryodhan and the Kauravas, including Bhishma, Dronacharya, everyone. Uh, just like a devotee is empowered by Krishna with divine energy. Similarly, mm -hmm. all these Kauravas are empowered by Danavas. That's what the Danavas had promised Duryodhan in his mm -hmm. dream. Yes, Prabhuji, when he was going to uh, sacrifice his life. Correct, correct. So he, they were empowered and they actually fought uh, with renewed energy and that was like an empowerment from the asuric forces so yeah that's how they supported thank you Prabhuji. Prabhuji, okay. my actual name is Riyansh. Riyansh. Okay. okay okay your name show is shown here krishna that's why i called you krishna my another okay. name is gopal chandra Prabhuji, you are saying that uh, Yudhishthir told one lie, but I thought he killed an elephant named Ashwatthama and then he told. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a partial lie. He didn't exactly tell a lie completely. He said Ashwatthama is dead, the elephant. He spoke it very slowly, mildly, softly. So that way he protected himself or maintained his honesty. But kind of, it was like a partial thing. Yeah, it can be considered a lie. It cannot be considered a lie. Either way, you can consider, see that. Yeah. Okay, Krishna Priya, uh, before we... Okay, one last question. Krishna Priya, yes. What's your question? Prabhuji, if Dronacharya was a good person, why did he do the chakra view? Dronacharya was the commander-in-chief of the army when he created Chakravyu. As a commander-in-chief, you have to do everything for the army, right? You can't say, I am the commander-in-chief and then sit idle. So, he has to do his duty as a commander-in-chief. If he was, uh, if he wanted to help the Pandavas, he could have fought there also. But he was obliged to fight on the Kaurava side as the guru, as the employee. He was an employed, right? The Kauravas had employed him as a teacher. So, last moment, you cannot switch sides. So he did the chakra view and all everything is a part of the strategy, part of the war game. So he did his duty. But Prabhuji even got a chance before the war to switch sides. Yeah, but he didn't feel, he felt obliged to the Kauravas because he was like staying there all these years. So he felt it's my duty to fight for Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra. That's why he didn't. Just like Bhishma. Bhishma also could have changed the sides, right? But he felt obliged. He had taken a vow that I will always remain by the side of Hastinapur king. Or he tried, both of them, both Dronacharya, Dhritarashtra, uh, Bhishma, Kripacharya, everyone tried their best because they loved the Pandavas and they didn't want to fight on the side of Adharma. But circumstances forced them to take their sides. Otherwise, they were not evil minded people like Duryodhana and Karna. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your participation and questions. Let us now begin the quiz. Gopal Lila Prabhu, are you ready? Yes, Prabhuji. Hari Bol. Am I audible? 
yes, yes. Okay. Hari bol. One minute, one minute. Hari bol. Am I audible to all of you? Just checking if I can put my video on. Just give me a minute. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, nice to see all of you again back uh, after a couple of weeks. One minute. Huh? Hari bol. Okay. Actually, I was got unmuted. <clears throat> all right. Nice to see all of you again back. Uh, uh, Krishna Priya, Sri Rang, Bimla, Riyanch. Who else? Krishangi, Sumit, Subhadra, Krishna, Naman. Thank you. Once again, uh, so let us start our uh, Kahoot quiz. Uh, if you can, uh, Mukund Malapro, if you can give me co-host rights, I am not able to share my screen. This will stop. I have given you. Okay, now I can see. I can do that. Okay, here we go. So, 
about to start. Is my screen up to all of you? Are you able to see my screen? Yes, bro. Okay. All right. So the pin is about to load. So ensure that you type in your pin, give your name, and you will be able to join in Tahoot. So, taking a bit of time. Not sure why it is taking so long. <clears throat> Let me try again. I think so it has started. Let me, okay, here we go. So this is what it is, uh, 651225, 651225 is the code. Request everyone to put that uh, and you'll be able to join, 651225. I see there are 21 participants at least we should get uh, 16, 17 and we'll start. We'll give another two minutes for others to join in.
All right, let's start. So we have total of 16 questions. I don't know why it is saying seven. Uh, I had done eight. So let me see if this which form of Krishna is. No, no. The, I have opened the uh, wrong one. This is the uh, last time. So we may have to cancel again and we may have to start again. So I'm canceling this and we will again. Uh, Again, join with a different pin. Sorry for that confusion. Let me go back and select the correct quiz. So here you go. So this is Mahabharat quiz number eight. And the pin is 959 959-9135. 959-9135. 959-9135. I don't know why the sound is not coming. All right, I see. 13 of them, they have joined.
नंबर इज नाइन फाइव नाइन नाइन वन थ्री फाइव नाइन फाइव नाइन नाइन वन थ्री फाइव questions today mahabharat quiz number 8 based on yaksha's questions and there are few more other questions as well so the first question what did karna do to prove himself before the kuru elders he conquered all the kings in all directions he gave charity in plenty he performed intense austerities he always carried out the master's orders conquered all the kings in all directions shri rang gopal chaitanya sumit and krishna krishna moving to the next question what was the sacrifice that duryodhan performed in the place of rajsuya ashwamedh jyotish jyotish stamba vaishnava agni hotra Okay, uh, quickly, I just want to understand here what is this Vaishnava sacrifice? Can anyone help me to understand this? Anyone who knows it uh, can raise their hand. Krishna Priya, who else? Okay. Uh Krishna Priya. Prabhu ji the Vaishnava sacrifice is a sacrifice where you do where you don't do the where you do the sacrifice to please God. Okay. So Vaishnava sacrifice is the sacrifice which is done to please the Lord. 
right anything else to be conveyed shri rang apart from that if not you can uh, lower the hand otherwise if you want to speak some more any other uh, point then you can keep raised uh, shri rang do you want to say anything else yes prabhu ji this sacrifice is done to please lord vishnu and if lord vishnu gets pleased then he showers his mercy on the vaishnavas okay perfect thank you all right let's move to the next one <clears throat> all right uh, shri rang gopal krishna naman and krishna priya moving to the next question third question What was the peculiar characteristics of Durva's pony? He would be mad, put at it, hit him with a ray. He would go for a bath, he would get angry, he would get angry without reason. All of the above. Okay, all of the above. So all he used to do, he used to eat at any time. He used to go for a bath. He used to get angry easily. All right. Fourth question: What was Duryodhana's request to Durvasa? Offer blessings to Yudhishthira, become the king of Pandavas after Draupadi has finished her meal. Never curse the Pandavas. Send a Rakshasa to kill the Pandavas. Very easy. Uh, become the guest of the Pandavas after Draupadi has eaten. Okay. Fifth question. Why was Durvas afraid of going back to the Pandavas? Because he remembered a past incident of offending Vishnuvas. Because he thought he may have to eat all the food prepared for him. Because he was in position to offer any gift to the Pandavas. Because he thought the Pandavas will attack him with weapons. Ah, uh, quickly help me understand this uh, answer. Durvas was afraid of going back to the Pandavas. because he remembered a past incident of offending anyone would like to share anything on this yeah naman go ahead prabhu ji in the past he had offended ambarish maharaj that's why he uh, always feared vaishnavas oh, okay and that is why here in this incident where uh, he was asked to go after draupadi has eaten so he was little bit afraid is is, is this what uh, uh, is being asked is that right naman anyone else all right moving to the next one Sixth question: Why did Bhima and Arjuna did not kill Chaitra? They thought Chaitra will become a nice person. They didn't want their sister Dushala to become a widow. They were afraid of revenge from the Kauravas. They were afraid of curse from Lord Shiva. Simple one: uh, They don't wanted to their sister Dushala to become widow. Okay, moving to the next one. What benediction did Jayadrath receive from Lord Shiva? You will become, you will able to kill Pandavas in battle. You will become the emperor of the world. You will able to get Draupadi as your wife, except Arjuna. You will able to check all the Pandavas in battle once. Okay, eighth question. How did Indra want to help the Pandavas? By deprive Karna of his armor and earrings, by cursing Karna, by blessing Pandavas with divine weapons, by fighting on the side of the Pandavas. All right, Krishna. Ninth question. How did Surya try to help Karna? By 
avoiding mystical weapons to karna by fighting on the side of kauravas by crossing the pandavas by informing karna about indra's plan to beg charity from him right that's the correct answer he gave the plan to karna that indra is about to uh beg charity from him all right 10th question what did karna receive in exchange of his armor and earring vajra weapon indra shakti weapon brahmastra or dasarayana astra indra shakti weapon yes that's correct all right 11th question who is the most happy person in the world one who is not in debt nor exiled and eating the food in his own home one who cannot stay in the city with all luxuries one who has got a devoted wife and devoted children one who has got a stable means of income so yes there are three things which has been mentioned one who doesn't have any debt which is not having any loan and one who is able to eat food the eat hot prasad hot food every day at home and the third one his working place is close by to his house so these are the three general things which has been mentioned okay moving to the next uh, what is the most wonderful thing in this world is of the world everyone is back for it one day everyone is maya so one can prepare for it so one can prepare for it yes so this is the correct answer uh, no one cares to prepare for that everyone will go back home to one day mm. but this is the correct answer no one cares to prepare for that everyone is dying but they feel that i am not going to die what was the first blessing that yudhishthir asked from yaksha please revive nakula madhuri's elder son please give back my kingdom please you uh, help us in the war please protect us from demons again straight forward please revive nakul's madhuri's elder son right I see Krishna on the top, followed by Sri Ram, Krishna Priya, Naman, and Gopal Chandra. Fourteenth question: What other blessings did Yudhishthir receive from the Yaksha? He will win the Kurukshetra war. He will remain undiscovered during the fourteenth year. He will make friendship with the Kauravas. He will become the emperor of the planet. Yes, he will remain. Uh, this was the second blessings which he asked. that they should remain uh, undiscovered during the 13th year okay moving to the 15th question what did the pandavas do with their weapons before entering virata's kingdom they carried them everywhere they did hid them underground they bundled them together on the top of a tree and they threw them in the river right Last question Which sinful person tried to exploit Draupadi in Virat the king Virat himself the military general Kishaka so Gandharva sent by the demigods a rakshasa disguised as Brahmana Yes it was Kishak who tried to exploit Draupadi in Virat kingdom All right uh, number 3 Naman Krishna Priya Great uh, runner up the Sri Lanka Chaitanya congratulations to all of you and thank you once again for all of you for participations and we will again meet next to next saturday all right any questions comments
Any last thoughts, uh, Mukul Mala Pro? Do you want to share? All right, I think so. He's busy. Okay. Oh, sorry. Nothing, Gopal Yabu. Thank you for the orga organizing the quiz and thank you for all the participants to uh, for participating in this. Look forward thank next Saturday. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Bol.